Hello and welcome to yet another video. And today we have something that we had before. We have a Prime B450 Plus. As you can see, this is the new one. This is the one that we have fixed before. This is my M4 test board. This is the one that has the uh, PCB uh, way fix that we have with the 555 timer. So we have one board to compare this to, which we now will put to the side. And this one came from eBay. And this one had is no post as you can see. This one has a little bit more of packaging. PCB damage, component damage. Interesting. Okay, there seems to be no IO shield. That isn't too bad because I can take the other IO shield if we can fix this. So Oh there is an IO shield, never mind. Even better. So let's take this out. And the obvious thing that we have is in the top corner right there. And I think we're going to look at that under the microscope. So and what we can see right here is we have damage to this component. Doesn't seem like anything else is damaged around here. But this looks like this is physical damage. This does not, not look like this thing uh, burned up like I would have expected it to. So let's see now. So I don't see any other damage other than this component here. And it is very clearly cracked in the middle and but still soldered. But if this was like for an electrical short or something, this component wouldn't have like ripped like this. I would have expected to like burn up or anything, but this is like, this seems like physical damage, to be honest. Let's look at the backside. So the backside has basically nothing except that very little bit at the corner there, but that doesn't matter. That is just ground for the PCB. That doesn't matter. The last traces, as you can see, are these here, and there are no internal traces going like all the way back here. So that won't be a problem. Um, just like on the top side, there's not, no damage there. So we got to find out what this component is. Um, well, obviously this is a MOSFET, some kind of, uh, some kind of MOSFET that has a lot of power. Um, and I cannot see anything else on this board right now. Nothing physically wrong. Uh, so let's look into a board view and see what component this might be. So I was not able to find the exact board view. This is a tough B450 plus gaming that we have right here. And we have a similar component right here, PQ4504. Interestingly on the board, it has the very same uh, number that we have on our board. And this seems to be a P-channel MOSFET, an EMB20PO3A. And this seems to be responsible for five VSB uh, what would this switch? So this switches five VSB on and off, probably for a uh, five volt dual. Yeah, pretty sure this this is responsible for um, switching the five VSB off and having um, five volts taking over of the board, the five volts that comes from the ATX. So I guess um, as soon as you start with 5 VSB on the board and after 5 VSB is being pulled to ground or 5 VSB is not being used anymore because the board was told to be switched on. They take the 5 volts from the board from the power supply from the ATX power supply and then supply to the gate voltage so that this MOSFET closes. Let's first now try to remove this MOSFET. For this I have to reorientate the board. So this thing has a lot of mass. But what we can do to make it a lot easier is to add leaded solder on all to all of these pads. So we add flux to all of those points. Now let's take our soldering iron. I will put the soldering iron onto a higher temp because there's a lot of mass here. So I will go for 430. Take a decent sized tip. And let's now uh, get my vacuum in here and now let's apply 
Now we have let it sort on the first leg, get it on the other leg, and this also already wants to come off because it actually bro broke all the way through. So let me get tweezers. Let's take this off. This came cleanly off, and let's now see. We have one more place. We have the back side that needs let it solder. This will take the longest because this has a lot of ground. So heat it up and try to add the leaded solder into there. So we lower the slab melting point and it all wants to move already. Let's see, can we get this? Nope, we won't be. Oh, yeah, we were, are able. Very nice. So I didn't even need hot air for this. We were able to remove this just with the soldering iron. Just get enough heat into the uh, into the ground point. So now let's clean this up a little bit. Mix the leaded solder into here. And now our place is prepared for another P-channel MOSFET. So theoretically we could use the P-channel MOSFET from the other board. But I want both boards to be functional. So I looked in my stash and found a s I have a single P-channel MOSFET on hand. Which is this one. But the problem is it is way too big. As you can see. So I will now have to go on to a hunt in my stash of broken mainboards and see if I can find a fitting replacement. So this is our Nikos 2003 uh, P-channel MOSFET and what I found on a donor board is this Nikos P2003ED and I'm pretty sure that's the exact same P-channel MOSFET and we will now be able to change this out. But before that, I want to give a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, which is PCBWay, which hooked us up with this nice high quality PCBs that we used before in a video. And PCBWay doesn't only do that, but they also do PCB assembly, do 3D printing and CNC routing, but more on them later. But first, before we going to change this out. I want to see if any of this is shorted. I don't have a reason to believe that because the damage that we saw seemed to be physical and non -el not electrical. But just to be sure, I want to look. So on this part we have uh, 5 kilo ohms and more. And on this part right here we have 20 kilo ohms. And on this one right there we have 10 kilo ohms and above. That's very good. So I have no reason to believe we are not able to just solder another component onto here. So it seems to be it was really only physical damage. So if you're interested, we're taking this from a Gigabyte GAZ7090HD3. This is an old board. This board had f heavy physical damage and uh, a water damage. As you can see here, for example, there's heavy corrosion there. Then we have uh, a lot of the pins missing and the socket being damaged and then there was a lot more damage around here at the top as you can see. So this thing is truly just a donor board and for that also uh, old one because this is Z97 which is like I think fourth gen Intel or something like that. So this only is for parts and that we will do now as well gather this p-channel MOSFET from here to get a nice AM4 board working again uh, hopefully at least because we don't know if there's anything more wrong with it so we're going to proceed in the same same way as we did before we're going to add flux to all of the points and now with our flux added we're now going to take our soldering iron going to be heating every single pad up and going to be adding leaded solder So and compared to last time, with this time we're going to be using hot air. Um, we got a new, we, I don't think we need to be careful because of these electrolytic caps that are on there. Because I think uh, the leaded solder should m uh, lower our melting temperature enough for us to just remove it. So I have 415 degrees, 50% airflow right now. And 
Now let's heat this up. And I think it should be about ready. And it's okay. Come on, I don't want any of those capacitors to pop in my face. And there we are. Now we have the MOSFET removed. And as long as the MOSFET is still hot, we have a great chance to solder it back onto our, our board. Because it will make it easier. So, I will be taking some safety precautions. Because our DDR slots are closer than I thought. So, we are first going to be using some tape to tape off our DDR slots so they don't take any damage. So then what I'm using for this is aluminum tape. This is very cheap stuff. So now let's see. We don't want any melted, pl melted plastic. So this looks good. And we should remove the battery for this because we might be shorting battery out with that. So the battery is now removed. And let's now solder this back on. We have let it solder on all of these pads. Let's just add a little bit more again onto the big one. Make sure we have let it solder on here. And on these also. Now we're going to be taking hot air again. Now let's heat it up first. And now you can see very well the solder melting in the middle. Let's put the MOSFET on. Let's now get you into place where you belong. This looks very nice. And this should be fine. Now just to make it look a little bit better. I'm going to be applying some flux here. Some flux there. And going to be using our soldering iron. And we're just going to touch these up. Once here. And once there. So this looks very nice. I think this should be it. I'm now going to quickly clean this place up and let's reveal our DDR slots. As you can see, they are clean as well. So I'm going to quickly clean this up and then we will see how this bot will behave. And now we are set up. We have our 2200G in here and we have one stick of RAM. We have our um, adapter for postcodes and DDR. Um, I sometimes don't know where to plug this thing in. Uh, Asus has something that's called COM debug. Sometimes that can help. Sometimes that works. PCIe doesn't work. There's also a header for close to the um, BIOS that might help. This does not have a TPM header because the TPM right here down there doesn't have any pins. So this is just uh, printed onto here. And yeah, let, let's try it like this and see if we can get any postcodes off here. If not, we're going to be looking at that. Because this, as far as I know, does not have any um, post LEDs. So I will just tell you what we can see. So let's first look at the passive power consumption because this is a big thing. This has 5 VSB on it and this P-channel MOSFET was close to 5 VSB or was attached to 5 VSB. And let's see now what we can see. So we expect about 100 milliamps. And that is very good, 130 milliamps. We have LEDs, so that explains why we have a little bit more. And now I'm going to be attaching our power button. And let's see for the power consumption. This has some sort of problem. This is power cycling, if you can see that. The one LED for posting is cycling right now. And as you can see, the, uh, the power supply is also very weirdly cycling. The power consumption doesn't look like 
a very intensely high or anything. Interesting. So I've not seen this behavior before. Um, this kind of reminds me like we have a short on the CPU, to be honest. Let's check that. So we do not have a short on the CPU. Interesting. So one more thing I would expect that this might be a BIOS problem because quick restarting is sometimes a BIOS. The voltage on the battery seems fine. So we have 3.06 volts. And I will be checking for some, for some shorts now. Um, let's see. So we have a regulator right there. I'm just going to be using the tabs of it. There's another regulator here. This seems to be fine. We have right here, I think we have VPP. This seems fine. We have this regulator right there. Let's check its inputs also. Seems all fine. So I wasn't able to find anything via my measurements because of the measurements seem to have been okay. But what I was able to find is this. I hope you can see it already. We have a capacitor that is ripped in half. Looks very interesting. Like this thing got cleanly ripped in half, as you can see right there. Like this thing looks like it got cut in half like perfectly by a razor. Like this is very, very weird. The kind of physical damage that this boss has gotten is very weird to me. Like I've never seen anything like this where like the f uh, the 5 VSB P channel MOSFET was cracked in a way like that and where this capacitor is just halved. The big problem right now is I have to see if in the board we that we have if that is anything similar to this one or not. So we have the PWM controller, we have their resistor, their resistor and their, the the capacitor and let's now look at the board view we here have the pwm controller on the left here we have the big resistor we have one smaller resistor here and then we have this capacitor here so this is a point one let's see in the top mmlc 0 0.01 microfarads at 16 volts or 402 so i will have to find one of those uh, probably going to take the one of those off of a donor board and I will replace it and then we will see each other again. So as you can see in the top right it says this is a 0 0.01 microfarad. This is very weird that it is written like that because um, what I was able to find was a 10 nanofarad 25 volts or 402. So we're going to be using that 0402 from a sample book, which is this one right here that I got off of AliExpress. And we're going to be using that to, to change out the capacitor and we're going to see if that will help us and change our problem. So after now changing out the MOSFET, I do not believe that this will have to, uh, will be the problem. So let's see now. And yeah, we have pretty similar behavior as we had before. As you can see on the power supply, we're still trying to boot and quickly, quickly resetting. So I have reason to believe that there is more physical damage and I will be searching for that and get you back into here as soon as I have found anything. So next line of business for me would be to flash the BIOS on this chip and I will be using the pin header that is on here and let's see if that can help our problem. And now we flash the BIOS. There is still the dongle attached to here. Let's see if that did any difference to it. Uh, no, <laughs> sadly that did not make any difference to our problem that we had. Okay, one more thing that I want to try is to put a different CPU into here and see if that can make any difference. And we have the same problem as before. Very interesting. I'm kind of at a, at a loss right now to what could be causing this issue. 
because this is a very this is very unique i haven't had an issue like this before where i had uh, like this kind of rapid restarting um and i also don't really don't really know where to go from here i'm just feeling around if there's anything getting hot um i didn't see any more physical damage on this board uh what i might go over to is i might try to measure some voltages and see if they're in a state where you can measure them if they are not uh, rapidly restarting too much so that i would be able to actually measure something so let's see for example this one this has 3.3 .3. and let's see here this should be like a 5 volt also 3.3 .3. this has 5 volts this looks good uh let's see here this might be 3.3 .3. this is also 5 volts okay um let's see here this should be 1.05 i think no it's in 1.8 volt okay good to know let's see this should be 2.5 i think yeah this is 2.5 um let's see here should be ddr voltage i think and this looks very weird so this tries to build up but isn't so this could be something that we should take a look at. Just like V-Core, I think this is. At least the starting of V-Core. Also didn't look that great. So currently I am actually stuck on this main board and I don't know how to proceed. So uh, there's actually a repair guide uh, for this ma specific main board as you can see it's just B prime B450 plus repair guide and this is quite uh, quite handy for um, For repairing something so there's a flow chart of power where you can find the individual um, Power supplies that should be on the board and you can check them so what we are going to do now, this is going to be a bit of a longer process, but we are going to get together and we're going to see for some of these power supplies if they are present and how they look like. To see if any of those are like um, not coming upright or not coming on at all. So let's do that first. We're going to be using the board view for this and going to be using this repair guide. So this will be a lot of back and forth. So first of all, we have 12 volts CPU and we should get V-Core and VDD SOC. So let's first check those two. I will see on the board view where we can find that and I'm going to show you under the big camera how it's going to be looking like. So I have power to the board now, as you can see by the LEDs. And there are a lot of capacitors where you can see V-Core uh, V-Core is going to be on the left side of many of these caps. So let's do that first. Let's turn this on. And let's see now. And as we can see, we do have V-Core, but it's jumping. But I would expect that this is normal because of the jumping voltage that we have. So uh, the next one on our list would be VDD SOC. So let me quickly look where that where we can check that and that should be on on capacitors right there at the top so this should be right here as we can see this has the same value so this also looks good okay the cpu isn't getting warm yet let's see now for the next thing on our list the next thing that we have on our list would be um let's see here VDDQ and VDDQ should be memory so let's find something where we can find VDDQ and VDDQ is supposed to be on a transistor right here under the memory and we can see it trying to start and almost being 1.2 volts so that seems to be okay as well 
So let's see for the next thing. We have VTT, DDR, VTT was present. I uh, was able to confirm that by the DDR tester. And after VTT, DDR, we also have VDDP. So let's check that. Let me see on the schematic where that, where that is. So VDDP is supposed to be very close to where we were. Let's find an exact path where we need to go. One of the paths is an open one that is right there. Let's see if we can get good contact. And we have one volt VDDP. Interesting. I'm not quite sure how how high VDDP is supposed to be, but we definitely do have something on VDDP. Um, let's see if the schematic uh, says anything about that, how high it's supposed to be. And let's see now. Uh, it's supposed to be 0 0.105 or over 9, so that is okay. So after now having checked VPP, DD, uh, VPP, VDTP, damn, that's hard. <laughs> let's check VPP DDR next. And VPP DDR can be found um, on the coil right below the RAM slots. So let's see. So we here have 2.5, so that is fine. Let's check the next thing on our list, which would be CPU 1.8 VSB as far as it seems. Let's see. Yeah, CPU 1.8 VSB. Let's see where that comes from. So 1.8 VSB seems to be on the bottom right right here. There's an inductor coil. Let's see for that. And they have, uh, we have 1.8 volts, so that is present. That looked very stable. Let's see for the next part. Next up, we have 1.5 VSB. I have no idea where that could be. Let me quickly look that up. And 1.5 VSB is supposed to be, uh, I think, under this PCH. So let me quickly find something else. Okay, it seems to be on an empty pad right here. So I don't think this controller is present. So it is 1.8 and not 1.5. So that is not fitted on our board, pretty sure. Because there's supposed to be a controller right there. But there's an empty pad, so I don't think it actually is necessary for us. And we don't need to check these 1.5 volts. So for the next part, we would need to find um, VDT, VDD, PSB and VDD, SOC, SB. This might not be fitted actually, so this might be zero. So let's see if I'm going to see if this actually is needed for us here. So I found that voltage, that voltage seems to be right here, which is 0.9 volts. Let's see on the schematic. And that seems to be about right, which is 0.9 volts. And let's see if we have VDD SOC SB. And that is also supposed to be on something that is not fitted on here, so we don't need that. So let's see if we have this SB, the standby voltage, the 1.05 volt. That's probably for, um, probably for the PCH, this one. And let's see if we can find that. And this seems to be our standby voltage for the PCH. So this should be present because we are actually starting up. And this is not the right coil. Let me see again. I'm mixing something up. Yeah, I'm mixing something up. Um, so we should find it on this capacitor right here. And this seems to be wanting to start up as well, but isn't starting up as you can see, or tries to build up, but can't fully build up. And I'm not too sure right now if uh, this can be a problem because we have this with multiple voltages that they want to start up but can't quite. Let's just for now, let's continue our search and see if we can find anything more obvious, something that is, for example, missing. 
So our next thing in line would be 5 VSB dual. And that is supposed to be on a MOSFET that is down here. Let's see. And it looks also good. Let's check for the next voltage. So the next thing in line would be the standby voltages 5 VSB, 3 VSB and 1.05 VSB. But uh, we are pretty sure we have these because we are starting we are going to uh, way further than, further than the standby voltages. And also we saw on the PCIe tester that we have uh, 3 VSB as a standby. So I don't think that can be a problem. Um, let's continue for 3.3 volts is coming from the power supply. So let's check for 2.5 volts and this 1.8 volts. So this is supposed to be on a capacitor right here. And we have 2.5 volts there. So that also is present. And let's check for the last 1.8 volt voltage that we can see um, right here. I think this might be the same thing that we saw before. Uh, let me double check that. So there are multiple 1.8 volt uh, rails. So let's check one more that I can s uh, see which was 1.8 volt SPI. SPI. And let's see here, this is also present. And one last one would be 1.8 um, from the for the SIO, which should be right here, which is kind of high to be honest with 1.97, almost two volts to be honest. Let's check where that comes from because that seems kind of strange. It seems a little bit too high. Let's see where that is created. So, okay, this this voltage seems to be coming from the SIO itself. So there's nothing that can be regulated by that. So um, this sadly didn't bring us any further because as you can see, let's go into uh, the overview again. We have checked all of these, all of these main voltages we have now checked. Um, we have gone over this whole diagram. So there's a lot more here. There is a whole power on sequence, as you can see, um, which is kind of written out, like which comes after which one, as you can see, 13, 4, 4, 6, and then here 3, and this is the first one. And um, you could follow these also, but what you can also do is you could follow this diagram. So there's another diagram that describes a lot of uh, signals which come after one another, as you can see here. And my biggest problem with these is always that um, at the very end of these, you have most of the time V-Core. That V-Core is the very last thing that you're supposed to get. And as we know, we have V-Core. So in my opinion, we should already should be posting or should have everything, but there's still something missing. So going through these would be kind of pointless, I think, because we, we would just end up with the V-Core, which we have anyways. Um, but um, what we could, let's, for example, look for PCH power OK. Let's see if that is present, just test wise. And this signal is supposed to be on this resistor right here. And as we can see, this power OK signal is not coming through as it should. So we have 3.3 volts here. But we don't have 3.3 volts here. Weird. And this is exactly the same position that we had on a different main board, on the other one where we had problems. So pre the resistor we have it, and afterwards we don't have 3.3 .3 volts. So the power okay is fading, but the important thing now would be, is there actually, how far does it rise? So let's see if we can get a max reading here. And if my multimeter can read fast enough. But this reading never seems to go high enough. So it always, it doesn't seem to get further than 
143 millivolts, which is way too little. Um, I'm going to be experimenting a little bit with injecting voltage into this point and seeing if that changes anything for us, if we can get higher or not. If we get the desired point what we, where we want to go. So let me quickly do that and if I find anything I will get you back on. So I've been messing around a lot with this main board because of not knowing what is wrong with it and I want to show you something. I want to show you something on the board view. One very specific resistor. So look at this. This is our SIO. And there's this resistor right here. This is a 1k ohm resistor. On this side, there's three volts coming from the PCB, uh, from the power supply. And the other one is our power OK reset, which is this pin. So there's nothing in between. There's just, this resistor is not placed on the board. You have this point, this point, and let's see the last one is a test point on the back side. So there's nothing else but this uh, resistor and the connection to the SIO. And now let's go into the overview. So I'm going to show you for the, uh, look at the multimeter for the voltage. We're going to be starting this board now up. As you can see right here, we have 12 volts, one amp. And now let's see at the three volts side, we have three volts. 3.38 let me do it like this so and now and the other side of the resistor we have 140 millivolts so nothing so first thing you would want to do is to turn this off let's now get the multimeter we're going into resistance mode and we're going to check this resistor And this resistor is reading almost one kilo ohm. It's rising right now. As you can see, we get close to one kilo ohm. And there we are. So this resistor is also good. So if, if you've watched my diff other video on exactly this board, which is this one, which is the exact same board, we had basically almost the exact same behavior or the exact same problem because what I want to show you is on my PCIe tester so as you can see it's on and we have power consumption it's going up to one amp and what you can see here is the red LED which means reset is stuck on this board what we're now going to do is we now turn on our different power supply to be able to inject voltage you can see the power supply has 1.3 volts right now and what I'll do now, I'll take my tweezers. My tweezers have the power supply attached to them. And now look at the power consumption right here. This one is the power consumption from the 12 volts. And now I want to show you, I'm going to go onto the bottom side of the resistor uh, of the power OK signal. Now look at uh, look at the PCIe tester. The reset signal is taken off and look at the current we could the current is jumping on the tester and you would you look at that that is a post screen we are in bios and if i take my probe away the board instantly freezes up it now doesn't work anymore because uh, what you can very well see from the fact that uh, the power consumption went low again as you can see power consumption is cycling right now between an amp and nothing so it's trying to restart and trying to uh, get back into the state that it was before but it cannot because the power ok signal is missing so you see this is restarting also so i'm going to be applying this again and look at it it now starts again
and I don't know why this time I can only apply about 1.4 volts to this point for it to work. If I supply any more, the board just instantly turns off. But like this, the bird board turns on and it actually works. So I'm at a loss to say uh, I cannot imagine how this happens twice on on this kind of board. Like there must be something wrong with this because if you didn't see my other videos, this is the exact same fault that the other one had. So the fix for the other one was the fix for this board right here was to apply a new circuit board onto the SIO and have it inject 3.3 volts after a few seconds into the reset line. So the same thing would work on this board as well. But I would have instead of 3.3 volts I would probably have to take something that is a little bit lower like 1.5 volts and injecting it into there. I cannot tell you how this happens twice. Like there must be something wrong with this SIO the way that they uh, put it onto this board. Like I, I cannot tell you how this happens. It's just ridiculous to me that it happens twice. And it happened with different symptoms. Like the other board had, had a different symptom where it wouldn't restart, but it just was stuck with PCI reset. This one, for whatever reason, was stuck in a reset loop where it was constantly resetting. And yeah, what can I say? So right now I've decided to actually build up the circuit with the 5 for 5 timer once more. So this is the PCB that we know with the 5 for 5 timer circuit. I'll build up another one. But the difference now is we need actually, um, instead of 3.3 volts at the output, this time we need actually 1.5 volts at the output. So this one would normally be the output, this pin right here. This is the 3.3 volt output that is get switched by this MOSFET. And what we did now is this is ground this is the output pin and this is the adjust pin, it's called. So what I did was this is, there needs to be a resistor divider to tell this linear regulator to what voltage it should regulate. So it takes 3.3 volts in, then it has from the adjust pin to the V out pin, it has a 470 ohms resistor, that is that one resulted in between. And then from the adjust pin to ground, it has a 100 ohm resistor. That is ground, that is the adjust pin. And this results of an output voltage of 1.5 volts that we need for the main board. And let me quickly show you the data sheet of this linear regulator. I took this re uh, regulator just off of a random board of the donor board. And right here, we can see the data sheet of this GS1085L. This has an adjust pin, an in pin and an out pin. In, we have 3.3 volts coming in. And adjust um, is being used with R1 and R2. So we have the VREF voltage, which is about 1.25 volts. And we have uh, I adjust, which is about 50, 50 micro, micro amps. So the V out is determined by V ref, so in this case 1.25 volts, times times 1 plus R2, which is in this case adjust to ground, divided by R1, which is adjust to output, plus I adjust times R2. So the 50 microamps times the R2. And in our case, we use for R1, we use 470 ohms, and for R2, we use 100 ohms. So, we're now at my calculator. So, we take 1.25 volts, which is the reference voltage, times that by 1 plus, we have R2, which R2 was the one to ground, which is 100 ohms, and then divided by R1, which is 470 ohms, and then we close uh, close the bracket and we times that but uh, we add to that the 50 microamps which is 50 times 10 uh, minus 6 and then we multiply that by our r2 and r2 is the 471 
and we get an output voltage of 1.53, almost 1.54 volts. So now I will connect uh, this, this circuit that we have right here to power and we're going to see the 1.5 volts. And there you can see it, 1.5 volts. And this has a minus because of uh, my props being reversed. So I'm gonna quickly turn off the power and turn it back on again and we will see that it isn't there instantaneously. So turning off the power and turning it on and as you can see there's nothing, nothing and then there's 1.5 volts. Exactly what we want. So now I have to task to, to fit this board onto our main board and then we're going to see if it works like we want it to. So now we have a familiar picture as you can see right now. We have this pin on the right connected to ground right there. We have this 5 volt connected to that top of the resistor right there. And we have the 3.3 volt connected to that pad down there. And for showing you the actual output, I need to switch up the board onto its head. And here you can see, this is the output of the regulator. There's a wire going down here, going into the input of the SIO for the power OK signal. So, I didn't test this yet, and right now we have everything built up. Here's our small little fix that we have. And I'm very curious is this, if this is going to work right now, because I could, cannot believe that we have two boards with a similar problem. Like, here's the fix that you can see that I did on the last time, and here, this is the one that you can see right here. And let's now see if this actually works. Let's turn on our power supply. And uh, let's get this one also in here that we can see the PCIe reset working. Now let's pay attention to the PCIe tester. There will be a green LED at the bottom that is for three VSB. And then there will be a red LED for PCIe reset. And we want to see that the red LED comes on and then turns off. And as soon as it turns off, we know that our circuit right here works. So let's now press the power button. So we have the red LED and it turned off and the power consumption on the power supply is jumping a lot back and forth. It goes very high, what we want to see. And there it is, we have a post screen. So this also now works and let's now see I want to hit the reset button, hit the reset button and our picture in the top right should refresh and it is refreshing and we have buy screen again that looks very nice and let's now just turn it off once. Now it's turned off and let's see if it turns on again. PCI re reset and it's getting taken off and it still boots and posts. This is very nice to see. So <laughs> I gotta be honest, I'm at a loss at why, why it happens like this. Like I cannot tell you how we have two different main boards with, with in fault, which is so similar to each other but isn't actually like each other. Because on the other board, we had to apply 3.3 volt to get into there and for it to work. But this board did not want to take 3.3 volt onto the SIO at the uh, reset pin. This one wanted one about 1.5 volts to work and everything above that it just shut down. So um, I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm beyond speechless to be honest. But yet again, I want to thank PCBWay very much for providing these PCBs. These are very nice high quality PCBs that I was able to use. And already the second time and I would have never believed that I actually needed that soon again. Um, thank you so much for them being so easy to work with and helping me to, to get these very high quality PCBs to get the 5 for 5 timer onto them. I will have links in the description for their site. Check them out. They do a lot more than just 
printed circuit boards. Uh, they do 3D printing and they actually do assembly service for the PCBs as well. And there's so much more on their site to check out. So many services that they cover. But for me, the most important one is the the high quality PCBs that they made and the quick delivery that I have. And I, I'm just I'm just very proud that I can have a sponsor like them and that they help the channel out so we can get further and uh, learn a lot more about circuit design. Um, yeah, I hope to soon make even uh, more complex circuits like have multi-layer circuits, which PCB, of course, a PCB way, of course, also supports and does. I think they do like they do many, many layers of uh, of PCBs and yeah. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this repair. I hope you learned something. And I will see you in the next one. This one was Mainbotmatic. Thank you very much and goodbye.